Oh no, the apocalypse is upon us. You can only have one bike. What is it and why? Coming up next on the Radio 690 ADV. KTM North Texas is your headquarters for everything KTM and your one-stop shop. Hey guys, Joe here, 690 v Are you looking for a new KTM bike? Yeah, they got them. They got adventures, enduros, dirt, racing, street, parts and service. Yeah, they got it. KTM North Texas is one of the largest aftermarket parts suppliers and repair shops in the state of Texas. Yeah, Texas. They don't just service KTM. They service most every major brand out there. If you're needing a fix or just getting race ready, you needing some new gear? Yeah, KTM North Texas, they got it. From helmets to jackets, pants, boots, goggles, tires, rims, new plastics, and so much more. So if you want great deals and to be treated just like family, don't wait. Call 817-275-2228 or text 682-465-6637. Or you can just email Bert directly at Bert at SLMRacing.com. Don't forget, tell them 690 v sent you. That way you get your discount. Thank you, KDM North Texas, uh, for all that you do. And uh, don't forget, they're the uh, new Sherco dealer of North Texas. Uh, go check them out, SLMRacing.com. And you can see all of the bikes and stuff. they got quite a few of them. They sure are some sharp-looking bikes. I... Uh, Definitely uh, check them out last time that I was over there, and uh, they're very cool. They are super, super sexy-looking bikes. Anyway, hopefully you guys had a, <clears throat> excuse me, a happy holiday. Everything was good. Christmas was good. Santa was good to everybody. You got everything you wanted. Maybe you got some gear. Maybe you're wanting a new helmet. Who knows? Hopefully you got what you were looking for. Sorry I missed last Sunday, but. I am the world's worst Christmas shopper. <laughs> I hate to go. It's not much fun. I don't enjoy it at all. Um, I like Christmas itself uh, to sit around. I love to see the my my two boys uh, when they get their stuff on. You know, they get excited about it. You know, even though one's thirteen and one is um, seventeen, <laughs> going on eighteen, they're both six feet tall plus. I get to look up to them now, which is horrible, but they are still uh, little kids in my mind. I got my coffee. Um, it's a nice day here in Dallas-Fort Worth. It's a little cloudy, but uh, it's only about 50 degrees outside, so it's kind of nice. But yeah, other than that, it was pretty good. Hopefully you guys had, uh, like I said, a good holiday. We still got a little bit more to go, so hopefully you got to get out and ride a little bit if the weather was nice i saw a lot of the facebook posts of uh, guys that i follow and they follow me back <laughs> there's a little bit of snow out there and around the country and uh, uh unless you've got paddles or chains or something like that or spikes on your bike you're probably not going to be riding a whole lot but here in the south no snow we're snow free and you can get out and ride pretty much any time that you want as long as you're willing to deal with either the rain or just a little bit of cold. So, But anyway, intro to today's podcast. Like I said, I do apologize last week, but uh, I was just too overwhelmed. I could not get a podcast out last week. Uh, won't happen again. Uh, but uh, had to, <laughs> had to, I had to get some Christmas shopping done. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. My problems are my problems. I'm sure you have your problems and demons that you deal with every single day, as we all do. The apocalypse. Yeah. You know, it's kind of one of those things. I always sit around and kind of ponder through my brain thinking, you know, uh, it's never going to happen. You know, I love zombie movies, but, uh, you know, or uh, asteroid or a comet crashes into the planet or, um, you know, uh, EMP bomb. You know, if people don't, you know, aren't nerds out there, <laughs> electromagnetic pulse, you know, shuts down all electronics. The, uh, uh, you got so many different scenarios, you know, that are out there. 
I'm not saying it couldn't happen. The odds are we're all probably going to be long gone before there's ever an apocalyptic scenario of any type, but it could happen. And if it did happen, uh, we're not giving up bikes. I'm not, you're not giving up a bike. So, and there's so many different bikes out there. And if there was an apocalypse, what would be the bike that you would want to have? If you were going to get an apocalypse, what bike would you want and why? Now, if you're listening on YouTube or even on podcasts on Spreaker or something like that, remember Spreaker.com. Just do the little search up there. Just type in uh, Radio 690 ADV. But certain platforms allow you to put comments and stuff like that. But if you were to only be able to have one bike, you know, it's mayhem out there. It's crazy. Everybody for themselves. And, um, if you can only have one bike now, of course I know everybody's like, yeah, man, I don't want like a Humvee and I don't want this. No, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, is if you could only have a bike, which one would you take? Cause there's so many of them out there. And the big kicker is, is, uh, I'll tell you my pick. There's probably, you know, I'll tell you the one that if, if it all came down, I could only truly choose one. But if I had like a selection of bikes out there, which one would I pick from all the selection? Because depending on where you, you're at at the time in the scenario of the apocalypse really probably would dictate what bike you could get. Am I right or am I wrong? Here's my deal. I live in a metro. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near this place if the uh, uh, if it hit the fan. <laughs> I don't want to be anywhere near here. But I'm close enough to where I can get to the mountains. Uh, some of the open range and stuff like that where I could actually get out there and I could uh, take care of myself and the people that were in my small tight-knit circle. Uh, surviving is not going to be too much of an issue on my end. Uh, I'm pretty good at, uh, at the skills that I have. I'm, I, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure that when it comes to, you know, drinking and eating and things like that, I, I think I'll probably be okay. Um, but as far as the bike goes, man, there's, there's a few bikes. I, I think for me, the first thing that comes into mind, you know, I'll label some of the things that I don't want on a bike and then I'll narrow it down to the bike. You know, the, the first thing that I don't want, I don't want electronics. I don't want any really, I don't really want any electronics on that bike. None at all. You know, I don't want heated grips. I don't want a digital display. I don't want, uh, and I know right now, if you're listening, <laughs> there's, there's, you're like, Oh dude, you forgot this. You forgot this. Man, I'm going to miss a lot. So like I said, if you're on YouTube, put it down in the comment section of, of what I missed and, and what the criteria really should be. If you're going to do it, you know, what I want to do is I want to eliminate as much of the digital electronics as much as possible. Like I said, the LCD supply, uh, display, uh, no fly by wire or ride by wire, uh, you know, no, uh, digital, uh, butterfly, you know, that, that, you know, the bike sends the signal to the, uh, uh, to the fuel injector or anything like that. I'm definitely, <clears throat> I'm going to want, you know, nothing of that sort because like I said, EMP is part of the scenario could be, you know, uh, something that can go wrong. So uh, my thing is, is I want to eliminate anything that can, can shut that bike down for any given reason. And not only that workability, workability is going to be high, high priority, you know, to, uh, to work on that bike. You know, I want to be able to know that, you know, if, if, if all I got is a Walmart close by or a true value or a, um, auto zone or, or something, you know, uh, I could probably find something in a pinch to work, to get that bike working again. So what is the things that I do want on that bike is a must. Hey, it's gotta be a dual sport. Come on. Now everybody knows that it's gotta be a dual sport. To me, 
I don't think weight is a huge factor in this. That's my personal opinion. I don't know what your opinion is, but I don't think that, you know, weight is going to be a big deal, but I do need to make sure that I can manage that motorcycle. Uh, if I've got to get off the road and be able to do, you know, some dirt or something like that. I'm not sure technical is going to be a huge issue, uh, to, you know, for the, uh, the apocalypse. It could be, could not be to me. It's not a huge thought process right now. My thing is, is being able to, uh, where I'm going or where I'm going to be at. Can I get through some mud? Okay. Can I get through some grass fields? Can I get through, you know, rocks, stuff like that. That's, that's kind of a big deal, man. I love coffee, but that that's a must. So definitely got to be a dual sport. So I'm going to want to make sure that tire selection and size, definitely a 21 front, no less than a 17 inch rear, uh, prefer the 18 inch if at all possible. Everybody knows that one inch in the rear tire. It really does make a difference. <laughs> it really does make a difference. There's a reason why motocross riders uh, have 18 inch wheels in the back. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, but if you know, you know. But um, so definitely the tires. I'm going to want some clearance on it. So I'd say at least, you know, I'm not trying to be too picky. Maybe, maybe eight inches of ground clearance in the center. I'm not too worried about the trail and all that type of stuff. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. This is not a, a motocross scenario. Remember, this is apocalypse, the apocalyptic scenario. Engine, you know, that's kind of a big thing. I'm I'm really leaning towards the thumper. Single cylinder, less potentially to go wrong. Uh, there's more bikes out there that are proven in the single cylinder. They're going to be lighter. Uh, easier to work on and uh, I just think that's that's the ticket I think I'd stray away from fuel injected I really do I think that I would really want to go carburetor driven uh, just because you can rebuild that carburetor over and over and over and over and over again uh, and get it all fixed up and you know and, and it's easy so if you have any issues or anything like that altitude you can adjust it with your you know your air screw um, plus your idler, uh, uh, screw. I just think that the, uh, and, and plus with carburetors these days, some of them are, are pretty fantastic, uh, and they do a pretty darn good job. Uh, so definitely carburetor driven fuel fuel is really going to be the hardest thing to, to probably come by. I think all these you know, motorized vehicles will be Really take your pick. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Take your pick. I think fuel is going to come down to it. So I'm going to want a bike that is a fuel sipper that gets really good gas mileage and it actually holds a fairly decent amount of fuel. Not too much fuel, but definitely will hold some fuel. Now my bike pick is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's definitely probably going to be different than yours, but I've got about probably two, maybe three bikes that I'm going to pick from if, if I could pick from them. Um, you know, and, uh, I know what everybody else is thinking too. Electronic start. Well, you talked about EMP and stuff like that. Well, how is that gonna, uh, work with the, uh, the electronic start? You're right. So, you know, does that cut out all of our dual sport bikes? Do we have to go strictly to kickstart? Well, that could be the case. I mean, it literally could be the case. So that cuts out quite a few bikes. Um, but, you know, there are ways to shield motorcycles. Now, if you already had it in place, if you don't already have it in place, you're, you could be, you know, it's probably not going to happen. You know, the bike's basically going to be uh, shut down and, and pretty much fried uh, if it's hooked up to a battery. But, uh, you know, I don't, you know... It, here, here's my initial thought of what I, if, if I could have it, um, and, and I owned it and I had it in my, my, uh, in my garage and stuff like that. 
and I had a little bit of heads up of when it's going to happen. Um, if you don't know that my background has a lot of computers up into it, but if you could make some form of a, uh, Faraday cage, uh, just copper of any type, copper mesh or something like that, put it over the ECM, uh, in the motorcycle and that would fix a lot that would disperse all the energy of the EMP and it would keep that ECM from getting jacked up. Uh, you'd be good to go. That opens up so many motorcycles. If you don't have that, well then you're limited. You really are going to have to do a kickstart bike to get that motorcycle over. So, um, like I said, several bikes, my first bike that comes to mind and I'm sure I'll probably get a lot of people to say that you're crazy. That's not the bike I go for. Well, the reason I like it is because it, 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 it notches a lot of the criteria. It notches, um, also East ability to ride too. the KLR 650. Okay. These bikes have to be able to be ridden, not just by me, but other people that are in my family and stuff like that. I can't just pick a bike for me. I got to make sure that other people can get on there and do the business. So the KLR 650, that meets a lot of, of the criteria for me. Uh, the seat height is not too crazy. It's semi comfortable. It's got a 21 inch front. It's got a 17 inch rear. It's a single cylinder. It's got 6.2 gallons of fuel on it. It sips gas, has almost no electronics on it except for the electric start. Um, you can't, you know, you could lose the, uh, um, the electric start if you had an EMP, but guess what? A KLR can be bump started. You can bump start it. You're not going to be able to kickstart a 650, especially the KLR. You know, I don't even think they make a port where you could put a kicker on it. <clears throat> but the KLR 650 meets a lot. It's a mule. It's a workhorse. It's it's carburetor driven. It's very very easy to work on. The military has used it for ever. Um, they even make them in diesel too, if you can find them. Uh, they just, you know, they're, they're, they're a proven bike. They'll go just about anywhere. They're easy to ride. They can go anywhere. They're just not real, real fast, but they will do the business. So the KLR 650 is probably, would be probably my number one pick. That's just me, uh, for an apocalypse bike. Uh, for that ease, for that, for the easeability all the way around. The only thing that I don't like about it is, um, it has electric start on there. So, uh, the control module, stuff like that would, would have to be wrapped or something like that. Uh, or you're going to be bump starting it every time, or you could find an ECM at, I could say, uh, you go scrambling through a dealership or something like that. That was never hooked up to a battery, had no charge going to it. And then I think you're good to go. So the KLR 650 really is my number one. My wife would be able to drive it. My kids would be able to drive it. It can lug, <laughs> it can lug trees. I've got pictures of us lugging trees down, uh, you know, uh, fire roads and stuff like that in the past to get firewood. And, um, you can pack them down. Like I said, they're mules. Uh, they get great gas miles. They hold a lot of gas and they just work. They just flat work. And you can literally push them off a cliff and you go climb down. And well, the thing is, is you got to get it back up the cliff because it, it's probably going to start motors. I mean, they just, they run forever. Uh, you can bash the KLR 650 all you want, but in an apocalyptic scenario probably could be one of the best bikes on the planet. Now I need a little more punch. I need a little bit more oomph. I need a little bit more for whatever. I think I'd lean towards the DRZ 400. And the reason why is it's really light, super easy to ride. Um, now the older model, I don't want the newer model. It's a five speed, um, carburetor. Uh, they're just easy to work on. It's got plenty of power. You know, um, it holds decent amount of gas. It's got a, you know, a 2118 tire selection on there, which is nice. Gives me a little bit more. So if I needed a lighter apocalypse bike, that'd probably be the one good clearance. You know, it would allow me to do more technical stuff. The KLR will do the technical, but it's definitely work. That DRZ would make it so much more easier, you know, um, 
I think that would be a fantastic bike because of what it is. Now, if I want to go into the, um, maybe I'm trying to stay away from the, uh, I'm trying to stay away from the fuel injections because most, most of them are electronically fuel injected. And once they're fried, they're fried. That means you've got to get a whole new injection system and all that to be just a pain in the butt. Uh, maybe some of the older KTMs, maybe like the 525. I got to go ride with a 525. Man, what a beast. Uh, let's see. I mean, th- there's a several out there that would work, you know, depending on your scenario. I'm sure, you know, people want like the Mad Max bike or the Walking Dead, you know, Daryl's bike that he had, you know. Uh, he, th- I mean, the the list goes on and on and on on apocalyptic bike. So I, I don't know what you would choose. And I'm, if you're, like I said, if you're, you're on YouTube down below, what and why, what is the bike that you really want? And why did you choose that bike? Why did you choose it? I wouldn't, even if, even if it wasn't an EMP tip till, you know, situation and I could pick any bike on the planet. It just was a, um, you know, I don't know, uh, asteroid or a comet hit or something like that, you know, and it just put the whole world in disarray, but I need transportation to get around, you know, uh, you could, you know, you could, you could pick a BMW 1200 or something like that. Would you really pick that bike? I, I wouldn't pick it. I think it's just, it's too big. It's too much to manage. Uh, I'm not going to be wanting to travel all across the country to go find things. I want to make sure that I've got a bike that, that I can get enough fuel on it. I can get around, you know, in the air. I, I would probably stick to the, the dirt dual sports and dirt bikes. That That's what I would stick to very much, you know, just because they're single cylinder. They're much easier to work on, you know. But then again, it's the apocalypse, man. You probably could just, you know, throw that bike off a cliff and then just go get you a different one, you know, if it's not you know, the, uh, EMP type deal, but I just think the single cylinders are, are the ticket. That, that's my personal opinion. You know, what's your opinion? Put it down below. Tell everybody else why, who, what, when, where, and how that way we can share. I just think it, I just think it's kind of fun, um, to, to, to pick scenarios out because, you know, I don't know if you watch those type of movies. I watch them all the time and, <laughs> and I'm always in the back of my mind going, man, get the bike, get the bike, you know, and they always go get some, beat up Monte Carlo or something like that in the, uh, in the scenario. And I just, it's like, man, why don't you just get a bike? I mean, you can squeeze through tight spots. You can still pack the back and stuff on the back. And I mean, and you're kind of a loner anyway in this scenario. So why don't you just, you know, strap what you need on the back and and go? Cause most of these are zombie movies. You can zip around them, you know, you can go much further. They're, they're easier to maintain, you know, you don't need nearly as much fuel to get to where you want to go. And they're always struggling to get these giant trucks and and cars and stuff. It just, you would think that the bike makes the most sense, but uh, I guess the riders don't ride. So, um, the the shame to the, to, to the story writers, (laughs) but anyway, yeah. Apocalypse bike. Why? You know, let us know down below. I appreciate you. And hopefully you guys have a great New Year's. Be very, very safe. There's going to be a lot of nardy people on the road. Don't go get yourself in a situation, you know, stay off the highways and stuff like that, you know. But if you can find a good back road, man, get out go find some adventure time and have a uh, have a blast. Like I said, 2020 is upon us. I hope everybody has a fantastic and a safe uh, New Year's Eve in 2019. And we will see you in 2020. Be safe. Find your adventure. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for being part of it because I really do appreciate you and you have no idea. Don't forget our giveaway is next Saturday. Go to 690ADV.com and register. It's right there on the main page up at the top. Uh and then we'll get you in for the decal. You know, we're a little behind on the decals, but uh, they're still coming. They're free, so they're, they're coming. You'll get one. And uh, if you want to be a Patreon, too, we sure do appreciate that as well. Thank you. Be safe. Have a great time. 690 out.